Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to another automation uh, build and then we're going to take a drive with this vehicle into Beeman G Drive. Uh, so today, as you might be able to tell, we are creating our very own luxury SUVs. So this is going to be uh, similar in style uh, and class to a uh, Cadillac Escalade. This is a pretty similar body to the Cadillac Escalade, if not the same body as the Cadillac Escalade slash Chevy Tahoe slash everything else that GMC makes. Uh, so we're making a big old body and frame luxury SUV. Now, I'm not convinced if we need body and frame, but we're going to leave it as body and frame for now. Again, this is going to be competing uh, in range to the uh, BMW X7 Cadillac Escalade, the, uh, with the Audi like Q8, the Mercedes, whatever the biggest one is. I don't know the naming scheme for the, the, the luxury ones, really. Um, but a big on full-size SUV. Um, I think we're going to start off with partial aluminum panel materials because this is still a 2020 vehicle, of course. It's still going to have modern technologies, uh, lander chassis. We could go monocoque. I'm not sure if we'll need it yet. We'll, we'll see the weight and stuff. We'll see what it is. Uh, HS steel for now. Uh, front mounted longitudinal. This is the only way that you can have this vehicle, obviously. Double wishbone and multi-link is another common way to go. Let's make a new engine here. Now, with any luxury SUV, this is like the full-size top line probably because I always like making the, the best of the best trim. Uh, this is going to be a 90 degree V8, I'm thinking, big old American-ish V8, I think. Is that is that a good idea? I don't even know. Uh, all lubum, dual verd cam, four valve. But for size, this thing's going to be a, a big boy. This thing's going to be, um, again, you know, com competing with the Cadillac Escalade. Now, now uh, Cadillac itself has a, I think it's a 4.2 liter, the Blackwing V8, 4.2 liter twin turbo V8. Um, that's a, a quite potent, fast, fast engine, which is not in the Escalade. The Escalade still got the uh, 6.2 uh, push rod, I think it's a push, is it a push rod or dual verde cam? It's got a big 6.2 V8. Uh, we're gonna make a massive V, but ours is gonna be, of course, twin turbocharged, I'm thinking. We're gonna have a, what, a 5.5 liter? A 5.7 liter, like a Chevy small block, a big stroke, I think, maybe, or a 5, like, a 5.5 5 liter? Yeah, that sounds like a fine size. 5.5 on the nose. VVL, please. Not flat plane crank, we don't need that. We're gonna do just cast for now. I might change this to, um, the low friction for better fuel economy. I'm shooting for around the 20s. MPG would be ideal. It's got to have some sort of realistic fuel economy, hopefully. Um, increase that to 70, 70, 35 sounds good to start. 9, nine to 1 compression sounds good. Twin turbochargers. We're going to tune into fuel economy. But make the intercooler nice and thick for now. And we'll do a just a standard direct injection setup with premium gasoline and dual exhaust. And then like a three-way reverse flow, reverse flow. Sounds pretty good for the mufflers, I think. We could do a bypass valve. No, we'll, we'll see what we're doing once we're at full power here. So right off the hop, let's rev it to 6,000. This is going to be a low revving vehicle still. And increase the boost to what, like 20 pounds of boostage? 25 pounds of boost sounds like pretty, like a pretty standard amount probably. I'm not too sure uh, what SUVs, how much boost they make. I think the BMW is around 20 with their uh, twin turbo 4.4. Uh, right now we're not making any horsepower. That's fine though. We're going to tune our AR ratio to... One, so we're gonna make a bit less torque and a bit more horsepower. We are shooting for around the uh, 500 horsepower and torque mark, I think. I don't know exactly what we're going for yet, power and uh, and, and what you might call it wise, but uh, we'll do forwards for all this just so we can hold the power a bit better. 6,500 RPM is probably the highest I want to go because this thing's still, you know, it can't rip that much. You know, it can't rip that much. Let's increase the let's put, put, put the VV layer. Let's put it to 80 for now. And increase the compression up by, oh, we can't even get any more power, we're knocking already. We can increase the fuel mixture. And then we'll play a bit with the turbine and everything else here, trying to get a, a bit of a better... I mean, it makes peak torque pretty low, but the turbo revamp is not here yet, obviously. So the turbos aren't perfect, and, you know, it's kind of difficult to make them really realistic. And obviously, as you guys might know, I'm not the best engine builder. So that's okay, though. We're going to make a bigger exhaust. I mean, we don't need bypass valves, do we? Oh, we can still do bypass valves. Okay, now we're getting some serious power out of this thing. Uh, we're going to lower the fuel mixture down just a bit, and then we're going to lower this down just a bit too. Because the, the horsepower is fine. Yeah, we'll increase the... What do we have for compression? 9 to 1. Let's put it at the 9.5. 9.3 to 1. Sounds fine. Uh, just over 500 horsepower. I want to get that to an even number. 500 and... 20 horsepower sounds fine, and 705 pound-feet of torque. So... Uh, this is not the best power graph, but it makes peak power, 6,300 RPM. Seems kind of reasonable. Um, makes over 400 horsepower starting at 3,500, so that's, that's again, reasonable. Uh, very competitive, or definitely class-leading, I think, for torque. And horsepower is, is definitely up there as well. 
Uh, we won't listen to it just yet. The intercooler is actually struggling. That's fine. That should be fine. This is going to be, a, again, 133-inch wheelbase. This thing is massive. This thing is literally probably the, the long wheelbase version, I'm guessing, of a luxury SUV because it is the tires are tiny. That's fine. Um, now, all-wheel drive or 4x4? That's the question. I think we're going to go all-wheel drive. This is, this is, you know, not even though it is a truck. It's, it's not going to have a truck drive drivetrain type. Uh, it's a dual clutch 7 speed because what else do you have? It could be a, like an 8 speed auto or a 9 speed auto for comfort. I might do that. Uh, do we need to just open diffs fine maybe or like a, a automatic locking diff? Sure, that sounds fine maybe. Medium compound, massive tires because this thing is literally a tank on wheels. And what, like 21s, 22 inch rims maybe? Biggest diameter size tire possible. Like 22s, we're rocking 22s in our massive American-ish tank. I love this hood ball so much. Uh, alloy wheels, please. And they, they look they look pretty fair size. 325s and 305s. It seems like a, a pretty fair size. Six piston, what, 14 inches in the front for now. And then we'll do four piston, 12 inches. That sounds like a fair bit. Fully clad and cooling flaps for the better fuel efficiency. And this is going to be a full three-row SUV, I'm thinking. A uh, seven-seater, uh, optional eight-seater, obviously, uh, but we can do like three captain's chairs. We can do six-seater, nah. It's got to be a seven-seater. Um, although, yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's going to be a luxury and probably a luxury heads-up display. Electric variable. I mean, we don't need launch control, but you honestly might as well almost add it, but we're not going to add it this time. Comfort and then semi-active, and we'll tune this thing for comfort. 7,000 pounds. It's going to use every bit of that horsepower. Now, we're not making a fuel efficiency goal yet. If we can get if we can get like 15, I'd be really happy. I mean, honestly, a 10 would be great. Honestly, I didn't know this thing would be that heavy. Um, make it a little bit more rear biased, and we're gonna tune the gearing. So this thing doesn't really need to go for 200 and 200 kilometers an hour, really. But we're gonna gear it to 300. Uh, there's 14, 15 miles per gallon. So we're gearing it quite, quite a long boy here. 14. 14.5 is where we're getting out of this thing. That's not bad. And can we actually change the internals to a low friction cast? Or is that not going to handle it? Oh, it's not going to handle it. Gosh darn it. What else can we do here? I want to increase efficiency just a bit more if we can. Well, actually, I'm sure we've got... Oh, no, we're not. We don't have any money to play with. I was looking for around 80,000, 100,000 would be okay, too. Um, this thing is expensive. My gosh. Now, look at this ride. We can make this thing a really, really tall boy. But I think we'll just keep it like a, a normal... Ride height a little bit on the high side, but this thing is, this is a tall boy. This is a very tall boy. Um, what else? We're just going to play with the body real quick here and see what we can do here to get the, the, the fuel economy up here. We can go increase plus five for arrow there. And the gearbox plus five. We're at 100,000. Okay, that's probably what we want to be at max. 0.65.9. This thing is incredibly quick. 0.6. Even with, actually, if we go dual clutch, a little worse fuel economy. So we got less gear since so actually it's actually much faster. 0.16 in five seconds. That's fast. I think a nine-speed auto honestly is probably okay in this sense. We could probably just throw an electric limited slip diff just just cause cause. Even though you probably wouldn't have one on this thing. That's okay. 15 MPG. Oh, I'll settle for 15 MPG. I want a 20 average, but 15 average is still incredible for a 7,000. This is over three tons. This is a this is a three and a 0.5 ton beast, pretty much. This thing is crazy. Um 121,000 is it, it's expensive. It's competing with the likes of what like a top end Mercedes uh, If you're doing like US dollars top end Mercedes probably almost a G-Wagon prices uh, this thing I guess in a sense is a competitor to a G-Wagon uh, Except the G-Wagon is obviously not this big the G-Wagon is nowhere near 133 inch wheelbase Oh, I kind of like I kind of like having that squared off but I kind of like having it like curved like that. I don't know you know, I, I think the basics of the car is done. I'm not gonna really gonna tune the suspension all that much. This thing's just like a comfort tune, boy. Uh, 6,900 pounds, 15.1 uh, mpg. Look at that, 73 comfort. Not the highest comfort, but overall, like pretty well-rounded stats. Like great safety. I mean, good, great safety. That's 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 great actually. Uh, good prestige, good comfort, good drivability. No sportiness, obviously. Um, and like pretty good other stats as well. And like, you know, it's not bad. 67 reliability for a three-ton beast. Uh, even though weight does not matter for reliability, this thing is. A behemoth truly it is truly a behemoth it's a little expensive i'm not gonna lie um but what i'm gonna do now is design this behemoth uh and then we're gonna take it for a drive in bmg drive so sit back relax and i hope you enjoy so we are starting to build our luxury cadillac ish kind of american-ish suv thingamabobber 
Uh, first things first, this is a big old American style SUV. It is what I'm going after. Um, and I, I do follow a similar design pattern uh, for some elements to a Cadillac, Ford, Chevrolet, uh, and some other cars as well here and there. So basically, after about five seconds, the game did crash, which is just great. The game crashes several times throughout this, so don't worry about that. The game's fine. Don't don't worry about it. It's all good. Uh, headlights are the single most important aspect and the grill of a car, in my opinion, for design. Um, so that's where I usually always start, and this is no different. So a big old, almost like a sideways, uh, like an H-style grill, but a sideways H stretched out uh, with a lot of uh, individual slats placed in it. And then some C-shaped headlights, similar to a Ford F-150 in design. Uh, with the grill and headlights, similar to like an F-250 actually almost. Next up, I am trying to play around with uh, like a, basically a, a placement for the, the, the company's logo. Basically the crest of whatever luxury company this is. Doing a bit more design on the grill here, then working on the bottom vents. Uh, adding in some uh, LED turn signals or LED you know, daytime running lights, etc. And then adding some other details to the bottom grill as well. Just adding some extra lines, chrome and steel pieces and stuff. Uh, fixing the headlights up, just making them a bit better. Also playing around with a bit more designs and stuff. Uh, I do end up with um, sort of a C shape, uh, but I, I do add bits here and there to, uh, to complement the vehicle itself. Uh, next up, I am working on the side just for a little bit, adding in just a few simple details on the side to add depth to uh, you know th the side of the vehicle. Um, continuing on the front here, adding more details here and there, playing around with all the pieces and stuff. This build took me about two or so hours to do the actual designing of the car. Uh, quite a while. A lot of intricate parts working in here. And I'm just playing around with some more elements on the side and the roof and the hood right now. Um, seeing what I'll do next, basically. Uh, working up some more details on the headlights and then finishing up the front end almost completely. Um, just for a few touches later on. Now, the uh, rear of the car is going to follow a lot of similar design principles. Uh, you know, I say that like I actually know what I'm doing. It's going it's gonna, it's gonna to have a similar design to the front. Um, also similar to almost Cadillac-ish in the rear. Of course, this is like a Chevy Suburban kind of... Uh, you know, let me know in the comments exactly what body this is based off of. It's, uh, it must be a Cadillac, a Cadillac, no, a Cadillac Escalade or a Chevy Suburban or all those bodies, etc. Basically, I'm not really satisfied with the logo, so I take the whole thing off and start playing around with more pieces and stuff just to see what I want, want to do with it. Uh, I do end up uh, basically just sort of making my own logo out of, I think this is um, like roof rack stuff, making it into almost like a, 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 a star, pretty much like, like an eight-pointed eight -pointed star, one yeah, eight-pointed star, uh, then uh, ended off in front of us this is the 2020 Mobius XLT. Uh, uh, maybe for this brand, Mobius is the brand name. It's based off of Maven, but this is like the high-end luxury version. XLT could be the model. Extra large or extra luxury or extreme luxury truck or, or you know, truck. I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, let's talk about a few more things about the design of the vehicle. Uh, get in depth for a minute and then jump into Beam and G Drive. Okay, so the vehicle is here in front of us. Uh, the Mobius XLT. Um, yeah, I finished off with almost E, E, E-shaped headlights. Uh, I, I like the headlights, I love the front end a lot. Although, um, you know, some people might say it's, oh, it's similar to so-and-so and whatnot. I think it's a pretty um, unique design with, with the body that I have. This is definitely a, uh, you know, basically a Cadillac Escalade body. Or, or so I think. Uh, so it's kind of hard to make it super, super unique and stuff. I did uh, end up leaving the side kind of plain, honestly. Now, the only, you know, the only big luxury of full-size SUVs that have things written on them are just one or two badges. Cadillac doesn't have anything on the S side of the Escalator, really. Um, I mean, Ford has, I think, the uh, the Navigator, or Ford, I mean, Lincoln has the Lincoln Navigator badge. just says Navigator on the side. You know what, I think this brand is, uh, you know, a cut above what Lincoln would be for, so it's got 520 horsepower and over 700 pound-feet of torque. This thing is, I think it's a class above that. I think it's it, it's above American luxury. Uh, it's a competitor to, you know, uh, the Germans and uh, the, the British. Is Bentley British, even though Bentley's, Bentley's German? Is Bentley British? Is Rolls-Royce British? But are they really British? Are they German? I don't know. Uh, this is more of a competitor almost in between. Um, because it's it's definitely quite a bit more expensive than uh, you know a Lincoln Navigator, etc. I don't think a Lincoln Navigator sell for 120,000 US dollars in 2012 dollars. Um, the front design, so we got E-shaped headlights with a sideways H-shaped grille with this bar that goes along pretty much the whole front of the car. We get smaller here, obviously, where you have the big um, the big Mobius Mobius Star. Is that what this is? Uh, yeah, it's literally just roof racks. I actually like it how it's sticking out so much. It, it, you know, it might stick out a bit. It might be, a, you know, a, a bit too far sticking out. But I think it looks uh, definitely interesting. People are gonna look at that if you're driving down the road and be like, "Wow, what is that thing?" And they're then they're gonna get blinded because the chrome's gonna blind them. Obviously, um, I want to say pretty simple, 
pretty simple grill design, but it's it's not simple at all. It took, it took a heck of a long time to design this vehicle. All this is chrome strips around there, more chrome in here, smaller bits and pieces, and then a bunch of even smaller bits that are just black there to add a bit more depth to the grill as well. Now, the whole theme of this vehicle is big blocky rectangles uh, with pretty much, I want to say, sharp and almost simple-ish design. So lots of squares, rectangles, etc. Uh, lots of lines, which is exactly uh, what you know the front end is of this vehicle. They got lines here going up here, and then the, the, the headlights sort of go like this. They fall the top into the grill here. This is all one flowing motion for the most part with this bar and this running light strip up here. So it all kind of flows together. And then the bottom also comes back down here if you want it to come back down and then it, the line flows. So all the body lines flow pretty well in the front here. Um, the hood, a little bit on the plain side. I don't add wipers because they always look like crap. Um, the mirror, I'm not digging the black, but we're going to keep it there anyways because it's already there. Pretty simple side. We got door handles. We got chrome trim. We got dark trim. And then we got some more uh, body colored trim, I think, in chrome trim. So a bit more things here and there dual gas oh no single gas cap oh i thought i had dual well we'll leave that anyways a massive sunroof maybe this is like the um you know the, the non-production model the pre-production model because the sunroof's a little massive i'm not gonna lie and then some more details on the roof as well uh back end similar to the front so we have uh actually more like c-shaped headlights in the rear which still follows a pretty similar design uh, of the front headlights uh, and the body lines do flow all the way across and around. So everything flows across in two separate pieces. We got the bottom piece and the top piece, and they both connect with this uh, L-shaped. Uh, what is this like a th not really a third brake light, but just like daytime running lights? Maybe I guess is what that is. And we got a third brake light up there. Some chrome bits and pieces here and there. XLT badge. Now there's no Mobius badge anywhere because I'm thinking maybe Mobius might be the brand for this vehicle for this this car, and maybe the XLT is the name. Even though this is this is like the model name, and then we have like the the trim name. Uh, but I think the Mobius XLT, Mobius is, is such an expensive, 120k is expensive, and maybe that's the starting price, who knows. A um, couple other things before we jump into Beam and G Drive, so almost a 50-50 weight distribution, a 52-48 weight distribution. We're up to 7,100 pounds because the brakes were definitely not, uh, you know, good enough. 0-16, 6.3 seconds, we can get faster obviously with the dual clutch, but 6.3 is quite brisk for a, a, a three ton, over 3 ton behemoth. Um... And then, yeah, overall market, so this thing is a luxury and a utility sport luxury, which is exactly what it fits under. And then it's also a luxury premium, which it kind of is, I guess. It's also most a GT, apparently, and it's also a pretty good convertible luxury, apparently, too. I, I, I didn't know that was possible, but okay. Now, the only the only demographic it's not in, of course, is the pony budget, because it, that's it's the real, the real demographic this thing should sell to. 123,000 US dollars, 2012, uh, 15 miles per gallon, which... I think it's pretty good, honestly. That, that's got to be better than, or uh, similar to as good as the Escalade. Probably a bit worse than an Escalade. Um, especially with the diesel that the new one's coming out with. Uh, 6,000 pounds of towing capacity. I'm not sure what we're going to do maybe with Jeep, but just take it for, you know, a quick drive. Uh, and I'll see you guys there in just one second. Okay, so this is BeamNG Drive, uh, this is the grid map suspension trial, so there's a few things we're going to go through this vehicle, just pretty much testing the suspension. Um, we're not going to set a record time in this course, because we're not setting a record time, we just want to test the suspension, see how this thing handles, uh, you know, just the basic stuff. I will, I might do an offered course after, we'll see if we have the time, basically. So overall, this thing is quite slow, and honestly, it, it, if <laughs> it's terrifying to drive, uh, we probably shouldn't be going that fast over the bumps. But uh, this thing can handle it, you know, the passengers are fine in this thing. Oh, this thing is literally a boat. Can we make this turn? And we could not make the turn. Wow, well, the turn circle's not bad, but it's, it's not great. Okay, now we can floor over these bumps here. Look at that, we could- I literally didn't feel them at all in the steering or anything. I like I'm just downshifting to a drive instead of- Oh, we could not make it again! Oh shit, oh shit. So remember, this thing is- uh, this thing is all-wheel drive and not 4x4, which is- Kind of uh, not American, obviously, but that's okay. This thing is not meant to be a crazy off-roader. It's meant to be comfortable with good enough performance. Oh, on this thing. We're going to really slow down here. We're going a little bit too fast. Um, there we go. We're, we're really manhandling our car now. We're going to go this side because it looks better, probably. Now we're going to floor it. Like a 103. Is that a good time? I'm not even sure, really. So we're just going to go to free roam here. We're taking, oh wow, this thing is, oh, we got some pops and crackles there real quick. Go for a bit of a drive here. The turning circle is just atrocious. I really want to go to this um, off-road course. Oh, well, yeah, it was over there actually the whole time. We're going to see if this thing can do any off-roading, I think. 
basically just the basic stuff. Just take a you know, little bit on dirt, a little bit on the stuff, on the stuff, on, on the the rocks. Holy shit! It does get air quite well. So this thing—it's a pretty rear-biased all-wheel drive system, which is fine. Like, it, I think all-wheel drive is better for most people. You don't really need 4x4 unless you're taking it off-roading, unless you're, you know, unless you're in Canada, then you need 4x4, obviously. But you know, I don't—I don't need—I don't need 4x4. It's fine. So far, handles pretty good in the dirt. We're gonna take it to this off-road track here and just finish up the video just with a quick little off-road circuit. Uh, I think we're going through this thing backwards. Oh no, we're not. Well, we're we're fine. We're going through backwards. It's okay. Now I wonder how like the game's actually almost lagging because the headlights. Man, does that look good though? Oh, the bottom one doesn't work. Did wait? Did it transfer over? Oh, I think it broke off. We're gonna we're gonna back up here. We're gonna restart the car. We're gonna re we're gonna respawn the car. Cause yeah, she's beat up. The Mobius is definitely. Like, it looks great. It looks great. Oh wait, we just did R. Oh shit. Okay, we're gonna go this way. Go left. God damn it. <laughs> go left. Oh, it goes right. Oh shit, that's not great. There we go. We're gonna do this now. Now we're gonna drop a car right here just so we're not in there. We can go through that course on the right, right there. But it's not really the point. I mean, not, now there's an off road course, but I want to do some serious off road. We'll see if this thing can make it through there. Honestly, the suspension feels pretty comfy and like pretty soft so far. It's not bad. That one's coming at century. It's nice and nice and uh, slowly. The brakes are so far terrible. They're awful. This thing does not stop quick at all. It's literally a two-ton boat. So we're just gonna see. I want to see what that lights look like. We're gonna turn them on real quick while I'm moving away from my microphone. Now that looks good. I think this car looks really mean in night. Oh, it looks so great. So we're gonna go in first person here for off-roading because why not? And we're just gonna keep it in first for now. Ah, uh, nothing like the sounds of your car smashing the ground. I think we're actually too wide. I don't know. Gosh darn it. Are we too wide? Really? We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get a running start, I guess. <laughs> we can't even fit. Wait, wait. Let's, let's, let's get a better camera angle here. Okay. So what's the problem? The problem is we can't fit, I guess. Okay, we're gonna go like this. There we go. Nope, wait, wait. How, how are we doing? How are we doing? We're, we're making through here. Okay, we're gonna turn the lights off. Jeez, it's bright. You can't really see with those lights. Okay, wait, we're stuck, basically. Let's, let's just give this thing a nudge, because, yeah, I definitely need some help. It's not an off roader at all. This thing does weigh 7,000 pounds, guys. Like, give me a break. There we go. We're, we're getting there. Perfect. Hey, okay. nothing like your car being totally destroyed. Your $125,000, basically a, a Maven vehicle. Pfft. Pfft. This is no peasant mobile, guys. Don't worry. You, you, you might have a chauffeur for this even. Oh man, this thing is definitely too wide for that. And there we go. We're gonna back up just a bit here. I don't know if we're gonna go off the ledge, but this thing definitely has so much torque, though. Look, okay, I just pulling up here like a like I'm not even giving it much gas. I mean, we are in first gear, but go nice and slow up this hill. And can we fit? Um, we fit perfectly fine. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the exit, I think, right? Look at that. This is benching that might actually be too soft. It might actually be because if you go up this hill, even like you know, this could be like a normal hill here. That's pretty. It's pretty not good, probably. Now we'll just go for a little bit of a quick. Oh, she's not dropping straight at all now. What's the front look like? Oh, it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. The engine was off for some reason. I don't know what happened there. I mean, she handles kind of good for a for a three ton vehicle. I mean, she's very very top heavy. She likes she's she's almost gonna roll here. Honestly, I'm kind of impressed. And we'll go this way real quick. We'll just go for a loop if we can. Can I make it around the loop? If I can make it around the loop, like, that's it, you know? There's nothing else to do. Oh! 
<laughs> First try. First try. I'll take that. I will take that. Okay, we're gonna end this thing off on a high note. This thing was a lot of fun to drive, honestly. I think it looks quite menacing. Uh, especially with the lights off. It looks great. I, I think it looks great. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Um, just want to shout out the Discord, uh, which is, I mean, my Discord, uh, linked in the description down below. If you guys aren't in the Discord already, what are you doing? Join the Dead Car Star Discord right now. Um, we do weekly challenges with my live streams and stuff where you guys can enter. Uh, you also can talk to me and talk to everyone else, talk with the community and stuff, and hang out. It's a lot of fun. Join the Discord. Um, what else I want to say? Live stream is going to be tomorrow, probably uh, around 5 o'clock-ish. 4 o'clock maybe p.m. Central Standard Time, Canadian Time. So uh, join me for the live stream there where I'm testing everyone's uh, pretty much Mazda Miatas. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time. Ah, oh, I won't even do a burn -up. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.